Welcome back everyone, it's JTV Gaming here, and today we will start off this episode with our FA Cup game against Barnsley. This is how the team will look against Barnsley. We have Besse and Banku as our wingbacks. We have Reem, Friend, and Sauter at center backs. Omergich is tired, so he will not be playing. Hannah and Schwab are center mids, and Hannah is in because Elsley is injured. Nedelev is playing the attacking mid. Gordson and Nibs are up top. Nibs is only playing because Wade had suffered an injury. This is how Barnsley is lining up. They're playing a 4-1-2-1-2 diamond, so we will have to make sure that we use our outside backs to our advantage on the offensive end. And their attacking mid, added Boyejo, it, who was our striker last season on loan. In the fourth minute of the game, Nedelev picks up the ball, dribbles around his defender, and lets it rip from just outside the 18. That Nedelev goal gave us the early 1-0 lead just five minutes into the game. In the ninth minute, they're able to work the ball around the edge of our box or that Ritzmeyer gets the ball and he shoots it into the back of the net. That Ritzmeyer goal in the ninth minute has leveled the game. In the 31st minute, they're able to string together a couple of passes inside our box before they're able to smash it into the back of the net. After that goal by Dougal, we are down 2-1 in the 32nd minute. In the 61st minute, Kruthers is able to draw the defender in before he plays it to Tan Long, who puts it into the back of the net. That goal by Tan Long in the 62nd minute has leveled the game at 2-2. In the 71st minute, Ritzmeyer beats Kruthers, shoots, is blocked by Friend, but Friend does not get there in time as Ritzmeyer taps it into the back of the net. After that Ritzmeyer goal, we are now down 3-2 in the 71st minute. That Ritzmeyer goal would end up being the last goal as we lose the game 3-2. They had more shots, they had more shots on target, they had more possession. We truly did not deserve to win the game. For our first youth scout, I'm going to be sending him to China for six months just to find any sort of players. Our next scout will be going to Japan again just to find players. Our third scout will be heading to the Korea Republic again just to find some more players. We now have our Carabao Cup game against Spurs. We've had the easier path, but that does not matter now. All that matters now is winning this game. We now get into the second leg of the Carabao Cup semifinal. We lost the first leg, 1-0. After that FA Cup game against Barnsley, I realized that the five back was not working, so I've switched us to a 4-3-3 with Bessie at right back, Omer Gitch at, and Reem at center backs, Banku at left back with Kurto in goal, Schwab at defensive mid, Murray, our youth player at center mid, Hannah at the other center mid, Gordson on the left, Nedlev on the right, and Tan Long up top at the striker as Wadent and El Salia are still out injured. Looking now at the Spurs team, I don't recognize anybody on their back line. I only recognize Kane, Bergwin, Fr Frazier, Sissoko, and Lloris. So I don't know if this is their strongest squad they could have put out, but it is the squad they put out for the first leg as well. In the 63rd minute, their winger is able to get the ball and he absolutely smashes it crossbar down. That goal by the right midfielder has put them up 1-0 in the game and up 2-0 on aggregate. In the 91st minute, Murray is able to cut it back before he plays it into Gordson as we are able to get a goal late. However, I do not believe that it will be enough as there is not enough time remaining in the game. After that goal by Gordson, we are tied 1-1 in the 91st minute. That goal by Gordson was in fact too late as we crash out of the Caraval Cup 2-1 on aggregate. While we did draw the game, look at the match facts, the Spurs definitely were the better side, which is expected of them. We now get into the semi-final of the Leasing.com trophy as we face Bradford. Bradford will be lining up in a 5-2-1-2. We will be lining up in a 4-2-3-1. You will have Kurto in goal, Banku left back, Bessie right back. Tim Ream is out injured, so we will have Friend at left center back, and Omar Gitch at right center back. Elsley returns from injury to play def left defensive mid. Schwab will be our right defensive mid. Nedelev will be our right attacking mid. Gordson will be our left attacking mid. 
And our center attacking mid, Janot, is a player I just signed in order to get the brand exposure objective. He will not be at the club very long. I plan on selling him next season, but he will be playing our center attacking mid. And Wade returns from injury to start up top. At halftime, it is 0-0. We've had more shots. We've had more shots on target. We've had more possession. With this 4-2-3-1 narrow, I've been trying to keep possession of the ball and move the defense around, and it has worked as we have had some good chances, but none of them have gone in. After 90 minutes, it is still 0-0, which means we will now go into penalties. This is the order which we will take our penalties. We'll have Banku starting off, then Jenot, then Schwab, then Nedelev, then Wadent, then Gordson, then Elsalia, then Friend, then Omergich, then Bessie, then Kurto. Starting with the penalties, Vaughn is the first one to step up for Bradford, and he sends Kurto the wrong way, scoring, give, giving them the first goal. Banku then steps up, and he is able to score. Next up is Donaldson for Bradford City. He also sends Kurto the wrong way, scoring, giving them the 2-1 advantage. Jeanette now steps up as he'll, he'll look to put it in bottom right corner, which he does, leveling things out at 2-2. Two two. Ismail steps up, and he sends Kurto the wrong way again as they take the 3-2 advantage. Next up is the captain, Schwab. We go right upper 90, but the goalkeeper is able to get an arm on it as they're up 3-2. Their next player is Pritchard, who again sends Kurto the wrong way, giving them the 4-2 advantage, which means Nedelev now has to score his penalty to keep us alive as we look to go bottom left corner. But their keeper is able to save it as we get knocked out on penalties in the Leasing.com trophy to Bradford. At the end of the season, looking at the league, we went on to win as we won 33 games, we drew 12 games, and we lost one game. We had a positive goal difference of 74 goals. Looking at the top scorers in the league, Wadent was able to finish in second with 24 goals and 34 matches. First place had 26 and 46, so I think that if Wadent had not gotten hurt, he would have won the Golden Boot. And in fourth place, we had Gordson, who scored 21 goals in 45 games. Looking at the top assists, Gordson had 12 and 45, Nedelev also had 11 and 42, Reem had 9 and 36, and Schwab had 9 and 45. We had four players in the top 10 for assists, and one of those was our center back, showing that we can get things done and we don't rely on specific players for all of our goals. El Salia also had seven assists in 32 games. Looking at clean sheets, Kurto was able to have the most clean sheets as he had 19 clean sheets in 40 games. Looking at yellow cards, Friend was the only one who appeared in the top 15, as he had 6 and 36 games, showing that we are a disciplined team. Looking now at red cards in the league, Schwab was the only one who picked, who earned a red card in the league, and he played 45 games. Looking at how we did in the Cups now, we did get knocked out in the third round of the FA Cup against Barnsley, as we lost the game 3-2. to two. In the Carabao Cup, we made it to the semifinals, however, we lost the Spurs 2-1 to one on aggregate. In the Leasing.com trophy, we made it to the semifinal. However, we lost to Bradford 4-2 on penalties, meaning we were not able to keep our title. Looking now at the total stats for the team, Schwab and Gordson appeared in the most games, each appearing in 63 games. Omergich appeared in 60, Nedelev in 59, Banku in 57, Kurto in 56, Reem in 53, Friend in 52, Bessie in 50, and Wade in 48. Looking at our overall top scorers, Wadent was able to score 30 goals while only playing 48 games. Gordson scored 26 in 63. Nedelev scored 19 in 59. Banku scored 13 in 57. Tan Long scored 10 in 41. Schwab scored 7 in 63. Friend scored 5 in 52. Marie scored 5 in 31. El Salia scored 4 in 46. And Nibs scored 3 in 10. Looking at the players with the most assists, Gordson was able to have 14, Nedelev had 13, Schwab had 13, El Salia had 12, Reem had 9, Murray had 7, Banku had 6, Wadent had 4, Jinot had 2, and Tan Long had 2. 
Looking at the players who kept the most clean sheets, Schwab had the most with 26, Friend had 25, Omer Gitch had 24, Waitant, Kurto, Banku, and Reem all had 23, Elsalia had 20, Bessie had 19, and Nedelev had 18. Looking now at the players with the highest overall, Waitant is still our best player as he is a 74 overall, Gordson is a 73, Kurto is a 72, Banku is a 72, Schwab and Bessie are 70, Janot is 70, Reem is 69, and Nedelev is 68. Looking at the players who had the highest overall change, Gordson is the only one who has been featuring in the first team as he went up 8 overall, Michaels went up 7, Evans went up 6, Moore went up 5, as well with Brown, Oliveira, Morales, Drummond, and Duffy also all went up 4 overall. Looking at the players' overalls who decreased, Tan Lung's overall decreased by 1, Friend, El Sabia, and Reams also all dec decreased by 1. Tim Ream and Tan Long are going to be retiring at the end of the season. We have signed two players on a free contract. The first is Alan Brown from Preston North End. He is a center mid who can play attacking mid, defense mid, or center mid as we look to switch to a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1. The second player we have signed is Sebastian Holman. He is a good quality center back as Ream is retiring and Friend will be getting older, and we need someone who is experienced to partner up with Omar Gitch. Looking at our overall managerial career, we have only been with Cambridge United. We have won two leagues. We did not win any other cups this year. Our biggest win changed. We, not, we defeated Fleetwood 4-0 in April. Our biggest defeat was still that 4-0 loss to Scunthorpe in the FA Cup last year. Our record transfer fee is 2400000 and our total earnings are 1,568,000. We have played in 127 games. We have won 83, drawn 28, lost 16. We have scored 229 goals, and we have allowed 108 goals. Looking at this season specifically, the club wanted us to avoid relegation, but we went on to win the league. They wanted us to reach the, the round of 32 in the FA Cup. However, we did not do that. In the Carabao Cup, we made it to the semifinals, we won the league, and in the Leasing.com trophy, we made it to the area final or the semifinal. We did finally win Manager of the Month for the first time in April, and we still have not won Manager of the Year. The record transfer fee that we paid was for Ginot as we signed him for $2.4 million. The record transfer fee that we have received was for Haber for $1.3 million. We finished first in the league. We played 64 games. We won 47, we drew 12, we only lost 5, and we scored 133 goals, and we only allowed 43. Financially this season, we were able to earn a, an $8.18 million profit, and our club worth projection is set to just about triple. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any players I should sign or any suggestions, please just leave them down in the comments. And it's JTV Gaming, signing off.